Hey everyone, Lisa here. I'm really sad we can't be together for Kids Church today, but we have a good God who loves us and he promises to be with us wherever we are. So while we're not together, we know that he is with us and his promises are true. And we're continuing in the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. Now, it's been a little while since we've been in Matthew, so let's try and remember where we've been. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. Matthew was one of Jesus' disciples. He saw Jesus do some pretty amazing things and heard Jesus' teachings, and he's written down a whole lot of them for us. Matthew starts with a really long list of names. It's a family tree that shows us Jesus comes from a family of promises. Promises made by God to Abraham and promises made to King David of Israel. Then we hear about the birth of Jesus. The true story in Matthew includes angels, a long journey, wise men and presents, a jealous ruler, and a plot to find and kill Jesus, which meant he and his parents fled to Egypt as refugees. Then we skip forward about 30 years and meet a man named John. John wore camel hair and ate locusts and had a very important message. Everybody, get ready. The kingdom of God is near. John wanted everyone to know Jesus is the promised king who has come to rescue people from their sin. Jesus is baptised by John. And God, the Father from heaven, lets people know, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus spends 40 days in the desert. The devil tried to tempt Jesus, but Jesus defeated him, holding firm to God's true word. Jesus resisted temptation and never sinned. From that time on, Jesus began to teach many people. He preached the good news of God's kingdom. He healed every illness and sickness the people had. And he called people like Matthew to come follow me. Jesus heads to a mountainside and his disciples, his followers, gather round. There's lots of other people listening as well. And Jesus teaches his followers what it's like to live in the kingdom of God. God's kingdom is only the best kingdom ever. It's a forever kingdom where we have peace with God and peace with others. It's how life was always supposed to be. No sickness, no crying, no pain, nor death. And the king of the kingdom is there. The king of the kingdom is... Jesus. Now, if you are in God's forever kingdom, what, would you, what word would you use to say how you feel? You might say happy or good or thankful or you feel comforted. King Jesus says that those who live in the kingdom are this word here. Can you help me guess it? Try guessing a letter. Did anyone guess the letter E? There's two of them. What do you think should our next letter be? Did anyone say S? Hmm, another letter? How about a D? And then a B. Do you know what the word is yet? The word is blessed. Blessed. Have you ever heard this word blessed? People might say it to you when you sneeze, heard you, bless you. Or people might say it if something really lovely happens to you, oh, you're so blessed. Or people might say it to you because they're wishing you well for something. They might offer you blessings. Now in our world, the people who are celebrated or blessed or considered to be the happiest are the ones who are the strongest or maybe the prettiest or the cleverest or the ones who don't really care what other people think of them. But the best blessing is God's blessing for us. It's the blessing of his kingdom. 
So let's listen in and hear the blessings, just some of them for the beginning, of what God's kingdom is like. We'll ask, what does it mean to live as a kingdom's, kingdom person? Who are the kingdom people? What are they like? Who's in it? Who's it for? We're reading from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, and Judith's going to read it for us. Jesus saw the crowds, so he went up onto a mountain and sat down. His disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are those who are spiritually needy. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are those who are sad. They will be comforted. Blessed are those who are humble. They will be given the earth. Now, when Judith was reading, things went topsy-turvy. That's because kingdom living in God's great kingdom is topsy-turvy. Let's see if we can write it upside down. Oof. Topsy-turvy. And it's because those who are blessed aren't the clever people, aren't the pretty, aren't the strong people. Did you hear that? The Sermon on the Mount, that's what we call this part of Jesus' teaching, is about how people who belong to the kingdom are completely different. Firstly, because of their trust in Jesus alone, and then secondly, because of the, their changed behaviour. It's topsy-turvy. Did you hear what kingdom people are like? Well, firstly, God blesses the people who are spiritually needy. Now that means they know they need him. We come to God, not with anything in our hands, empty handed. There's no money, no thing we do, no clever thing we say that we can offer to be part of God's kingdom. There's nothing. And God says, blessed are the people who know they need him, who depend only on him. Kingdom people are, did you see what they are? They're sad. Now, this isn't talking about people being upset because they're not allowed to play Minecraft or because our netball games have been cancelled or because we can't see our friends at school at the moment. It's talking about a different sadness. Mourning. Grieving being really sad and sorrowful. Does sorrowful sound like a word you know? It sounds like sorry. And so kingdom people are people who are sad about their sin. They're people who who take sin Seriously, it's about being sad about our sin, truly sorry for turning our backs on God. When we realise what Jesus did for us to give up his life, that we might be forgiven for our sins. And when we are truly sorry for our sins, we will be sad. Truly sorry. And Jesus says we will be forgiven of our sins. And we will be comforted in knowing that he does forgive us, that he brings us into the kingdom and gives us peace. So blessed are the people who take sin seriously, who are truly sorry and sad about their sin. And the third one, the third one is that people are humble. Or another word that's used in the Bible is the word meek. Being humble or being meek doesn't mean weak or uncertain. It means they don't boast in what they do. They don't put themselves above others. Here's a story to help us think about these three ideas some more. Um.
Stories of the Bible The Parable of the Pharisee and Tax Collector This is Jesus hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like walking on water. Oh, hey guys. And even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! One day, Jesus told this story to some people who thought they were very good and looked down on everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. Tax collectors were hated by many people. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not bad like other people, cheaters and sinners. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. Ha <laughs> ha! I fast and give up eating food twice a week, and I give you a tenth of everything I earn. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest because he was so sad, saying, God have mercy on me, for I am a sinner. Then Jesus said, I tell you, when the tax collector went home, he was right with God, but the Pharisee was not right with God. Everyone who makes himself great will be made humble, but everyone who makes himself humble will be made great. kids church we often talk about living God's best ways and we know living his way is only possible because of what Jesus has done for us in dying and rising for us he's brought us peace with God he brings people into the kingdom the best blessing is God's blessing for us it's the blessing of his kingdom it's God's good gift of peace and forgiveness given to us through Jesus being part of the topsy-turvy kingdom is only possible because Jesus is the one who lived it perfectly. So as we wrap up, I have two questions for you to think about and talk about as a family. Number one, have you come before God empty-handed, knowing you need him? Or what things do you try and bring to say, God, I'm good enough? The second question is, how can you take sin seriously? What does that look like for you? Remembering to say sorry to God, sorry to the people that we've hurt, knowing he's forgiven us, repenting, turning away and turning to him. Let's pray we'll be kingdom people. Heavenly Father, help us to follow you. Thank you that Jesus teaches what it's like to be in your kingdom. Help us know your best ways. Help us live your best ways. And thank you that Jesus is the one who lives your best ways perfectly. Please help us uh, grow in what it means to be your kingdom people. Amen. There's some activity sheets to do, some questions to chat about. See you next week.